good morning. Um, hello. Um, I have, a, 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 a one of the presenters before, a little bit of a change of my title. This is the, the original land, one that you see in the, in the program. However, in the process of making this presentation, I, I took it a little bit to something that fits more uh, uh, my intentions. So it's a, something called like, good intentions are not enough and searching for the many faces of colonialism in mass media. So uh, I was inspired by the uh, organizers, uh, one of the organizers' comments on, on the abstract that says that any reference to colonial violence and its destructive effects on local communities is very often deleted from heritage discourses, perpetuating a colonialist narrative that provides a pleasant yet uncritical consum consumption of paths for tourists. And then I, I was... Uh, uh, I wanted to, to, to combine and, and think this uh, with this uh, growing interest, interest in representing historical or scientific facts that we are very uh, used to nowadays in, a, in short video format that are widely uh, viewed on social media or on mass media. So uh, combining these two ideas, uh, this presentation deals with the notion that in the attempt of popularizing knowledge about the past, certain editors and producers actually generates an inaccurate picture that perpetuates widely racist and colonialist ideas. So sometimes these information are not erased, but actually even that they are an explicit attempt on doing a post-colonialist or anti-colonial uh, representation, they end up doing actually the opposite. So for this, uh, I'm going to present three case studies of three particular topics uh, that I thought uh, we can actually discuss about this. And the idea is, is to generate a, 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 a a hot debate, hopefully. So the first one is about content in non-academic animations. Second, uh, titles in academic websites and blogs. And finally, uh, about narratives in, in the debate between uh, top-down and bottom-up uh, perspectives. So I'm going to show you a, a small video. Uh, this is the first one. Uh, the first example is about Columbus and America. Hopefully, you will hear the sound. Today, we'll learn about Christopher Columbus, the heroic explorer who discovered America and proved so this animation comes from, from a series called Adams Ruins Everything. And, uh, and perhaps you, you, you already identify, and this is what, what my point is, and in this particular thing is, what is America? In this video, they talk about America. And, uh, and at least so far, it is uh, not very clear if they are talking about the United States of America, the actual country, or they are referring to the continental mass of land naming in order of, in honor of Americo Vespucci, we see the whole continent of America. So probably you, you, you know uh, by now that uh, America, as I just mentioned, was uh, named by uh, Martin Walsemuller in the 1508 uh, map, or, or uh, uh, map mundi called Unerva. Universalis Cosmographia, and he was the first that actually named or tagged America within the, the mass, uh, uh, or the, what they were, was defined after the New World. Um, and, that, and that was, as I mentioned, in honor of Americo Vespucci. However, the United States, the, the uh, contemporary country, um, before they got their independence, the, the what is called the original 13 colonies, <coughs> They were uh, uh, named back then as United Colony, Colonies of British North America in order to differentiate, uh, the, of course, from the Spanish North America or Portu uh, Spanish America or Portuguese America. However, in the, in the, in the Declaration of Independence, uh, they, they changed the name from United Colonies of British North America to the United States of America in a process of, in, from my point of view, of a, of a, of a double play. For, for one side, they got their independence from a colonial power, which was, which was the British Empire. But at the same time, they become the new colonial power by assuming the, the name of a whole continent to themselves. So for me, this is very interesting. And, and, and here I bring a, a, a quote from Kihano and Ballerstein, who has so wonderfully put it, that coloniality was essentially the creation of a set of states linked together within an interstate system of hierarchical layers but even when formal colonial status will end, coloniality will not. And this, I think, also in, uh, in agreement with Kihan and Wallerstein, what happened in this particular case. And then they go further to explain that ethnicity was the inev inevitable uh, cultural consequence of coloniality. And this is very uh, clear, clear in the American continent when we have a population that is American, the true Americans, and then the, the others, which are the Native Americans, for example, in this picture, 
or Black Americans or Asian Americans or Latin Americans, as in my case. So I think that in this process of independence, they also create a, a, a very uh, colonial uh, perspective that create and, 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 and define a whole set of identities. So just to, to finish with the same video. <laughs> So, as you can see in this video, this idea that perhaps some abstract and not very concrete is actually fully embedded within a, a, a mindset or, or, or a mind view in the continent, in particular in the people from the United States. And this is very funny, we can debate a lot, but the combination of how, for example, it says no descubierto in Spanish, as if Columbus was a Spanish-speaking person, which was not. Because as you all know, he was a, a well, she come, he come from what today is uh, Italy. And then uh, also, I wanted to show a, 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 another brief bit, it's all edited in order to shrink it, uh, in order to exemplify, um, I'm sorry, these are the views on YouTube of this particular video. And this is the part I, I actually get very worried about. Uh, uh, that this idea that America refers to a particular country and not the whole continent is, is so embedded within, a, within populations that you can see it from very um, uh, common uh, situations up to uh, complex videos from huge agencies. This is a fantastic video, by the way. It's amazing, but not the part I'm, I'm trying to point to. So, the, just a little humor from my part. So, according to this video, Columbus didn't sail to, to find today's Japan, as you probably already know. He was not sailing to the Indi, to, the, to, to India. He was sailing to the West Indies, which is to, today's Japan. But actually, he was sailing to North America, as if North America was something that was already existed before the arrival of Columbus, which is uh, what I think is also a very complicated idea. That w behind this, what is what, what is uh, what is uh, the information that is uh, stated is that America or the United States was something that existed before Columbus and he discovered it, uh, a country that already existed. So the second point uh, is a, 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 a recent article from uh, a colleagues uh, of mine, Louis Borg and Ashley Thompson, that was recently published in the, in the AAA blog. And, uh, uh, and this deals more with this idea that archaeology needs to be hot. Uh, or needs to be catchy and, and fun and excited in order to attract people uh, to the work that we are doing. So then, uh, in this paper uh, uh, entitled The Miseducation of the Public and the Ratio of Native Americans, uh, they debate um, uh, uh, this article published in, in American Archaeology, and the title was uh, The Mystery of Ho of Ho Hoc and Ball Courts. So they say that uh, instead of, of the actual title be something more like when sports were politics and what we know about the Hawk and Balkors, the editors of, the, of this uh, magazine, they decided to use this uh, catchy and hot title in order to, to attract people. However, uh, as they say, and I quote them, dramatizing history with the use of the term mystery erases how much descendant communities and archaeologists actually know. And this erasure can lead to the continued mar mar marginalization and invisibility of contemporary Indigenous society, um, which I think is very problematic and is a perpetuation of colonialist ideas, as uh, perhaps as you already know, in, at least in the, in the Caribbean and in the, in, the, in the American continent, the invisibility of Indigenous communities was one of the approaches uh, uh, used by, by the colonialist powers. And then they, they go further to say that, um, that the problem is that certain editors, as, as I was mentioning before, uh, they tend to use these hot and catchy titles in order to attract people. And then they think that by using this, these titles, they will actually bring people to read the actual content. However, as, as, as recent research on, 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 on market and marketing has already uh, highlighted, most of the people only stay with the title. So most of people in social media will only read the title and like it or share it without actually going to the content. And, uh, and, and one example, very briefly, uh, is the... Oh, 
is the, uh, this um, uh, newspaper that perhaps you all know of our, our 13 year old kid that discovered an ancient Maya city. So most of the people actually stay with that idea without actually going further to, 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 to understand the information. So just to wrap up, uh, the, the, the final point is about high impact colonial discourses in mass media. And here I bring the, uh, the, the marvelous uh, new movie Black Panther, which was sold as a, a neo, uh, 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 sorry, uh, anti-colonial or post-colonial movie that will uh, reinsert or, or bring power to, to, to black populations. Uh, however, in a, in a recent paper by Patrick Atara, a Kenyan uh, a writer, uh, as you can see, he, they, they actually see the movie as a very neo-colonial vision of Africa. And again, to, to give a small quote of him, he said that Africa is a creation of a white, and, a white world and the literary, academic, cinematic, and political mechanism that it used to give mythology the credibility of truth. So uh, I think that uh, from different uh, levels of, of, of media, of mass media or broadcast media, we are seeing how uh, this representation of coloniality are actually being kept, even that they are disguised as if they are not. And, you, and just uh, to end with the videos, uh, uh, this is. No, la France n'est pas coupable d'avoir voulu faire partager sa culture au peuple d'Afrique, d'Asie et d'Amérique du Nord. So the, the words of the former French Prime Minister wrap up this very well in the sense that colonialism sometimes is perceived not as, as colonialism, as what it is, but uh, is a kind of a disguise between these uh, interpretations and opinions, like sharing of cultures, for example. So to, to finish, I'm sorry, I'm taking one minute late. <laughs> uh, uh, to, wrap, uh, to, to continue with the questions that the organizers ask about how are, can archaeologists as public intellectuals bring this to the current debate, or how can we draw on the colonial experience, and uh, um, to repeal increasing xenophobic society, I, th I, I thought on going back to uh, 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 the idea uh, expressed by Alfredo González Rival, a Spanish archaeologist, uh, that in his keynote lecture at the EAA on, on past September, he, he, he talked about that we need to go back to conflict and to accept conflict, not only in the past and, and in our disciplines, but actually in our current uh, 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 endeavors, and that we need to do a, a political archaeology, and I think that is a, a, a very accurate, at least in, in my own practice, but not only for, from, 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 the, from, from, from the local uh, uh, terms in, in our interaction with local communities and the work that we are doing with local communities, but also even beyond uh, the attempts of, of as, uh, Borg and Thompson did in, the, in, in their paper, in going for, for magazines, in websites, uh, or for example, other colleagues from Puerto Rico in trying to popularize the, the, the actual knowledge, the critical knowledge that we are producing, but also, as uh, uh, Gonzalo Rival uh, recommended, we need to begin generating these mass discourses in order to really reach uh, the amount of people that we need to, to reach in order to uh, express uh, uh, ideas that are uh, less colonial or, 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 uh, or more critical about our past. And, uh, and perhaps the only way to do this is to go, again, with these uh, uh, short video formats and actually reach the millions of people that we need to reach. Thank you very much.